Welcome to the session in which we will discuss distribution to shareholders from S Corporation. Well, what are we discussing here? Simply put, shareholders would receive distribution, maybe cash or property from corporation based on their ownership interest in the corporate stock. So simply put, the corporation generate a profit, revenues minus expenses, and at some point it's going to distribute some of that money or some sort of a property to the shareholders. The question is, how do we treat those distribution? Now it's very important to, differ to differentiate between shareholder distribution and salaries because in an S corporation the owners can also be employees. So those are different, they are treated as salaries and wages. That's This is not what we are discussing. Bear in mind that S corporation income is not taxable when distributed. Why? Because remember, an S corporation is a flow through entity. It means whether they distribute the money or not in the year that the S corporation generate the revenues minus the expenses and will get to the profit. And let's assume 100,000 minus 40,000 equal to 60,000. And now you're a 50, let's assume you're a 50% owner. You are responsible for $30,000 of that 60,000. You are responsible for paying taxes on that $30,000. Now, whether you took that $30,000, whether that $30,000 is distributed or not, it's irrelevant. So simply put, when the company makes a profit, you are responsible for paying the taxes. Now, when you take the money out, well, this is what we have to discuss. It may or may not be taxable. This is what we need to discuss the rules. So this is what we are discussing here. There are two types of distribution we need to be aware of. One is called liquidating distribution. And what is liquidating distribution? Hopefully you know what that is. It's when the company go, go out of business. Basically, the receipts shareholder won't have any ownership interest in the capital stock. Simply put, you're going down to zero. The company is liquidating and there's non-liquid liquidating where you don't liquidate. After this distribution, you exist. And this is what we're going to be discussing here. We'll have a different discussion about liquidating distribution in a separate recording. Now, in order to understand the distribution to shareholder from S Corporation, we have to understand few terms that are unique or fairly new. Not, they're not, some of them are unique or new to the S Corporation. The first term is something called accumulated adjustment account, all triple A. Another account called Other Adjustment Accounts, OAA, and Accumulated Earnings and Profit. You should be familiar with this AEP from the C-Corp. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now, I want to show you physically these accounts where do they go on the ink on the tax return so this way you just kind of see it's good to see the physical effect of things so they go under schedule m2 and the reason i have schedule m1 so you know what schedule m1 we'll revisit this later it's reconciliation which is of income either income or loss per books with the return we'll talk about this later on it has its own fun story but this is what we need to be aware of. The first one is AAA, triple A, accumulated adjustment account. Then we have AEP. Then we have OAA. So those are the three accounts that we need to understand. And once we understand those accounts, it's easier to see how do they apply in our situation. Now, there's also a new column at Schedule M2, which is, I don't believe this column existed when I was in practice a long time ago, which are shareholders interest undistributable taxable income previously tax which is basically the amount that you can take that is not distributable and was already taxed so it doesn't have to be taxed again this is basically no we don't have to worry about this for our purposes so guess what i'm gonna start with the with the with the third one c i'm gonna start with accumulated earnings and profit this account only exists if the corporation if this s corporation was a c 
in the past and it has earnings so when the corporation was a c corporation remember initially we are a c we might operate as a c for several years then switch to an s or we may exist as a corporation and immediately be an s corporation so aep only exists this account you'll have any numbers here only if the corporation was a c corporation in the past and that c corporation had earning undistributed earning you switch from c to an s therefore you have to keep track of those accumulated earnings and profit because those are not taxed yet so when you take them out those are taxed so this is aep so this is what aep is the second thing we're going to discuss is the triple a accumulated adjustment account so what is accumulated adjustments account or triple a this account represent the cumulative undistributed earnings and profit during the years the corporation is operating as an s corporation so the triple a account i'm going to be calling it the triple a is specific to s corporation status so when the s corporation starts day one or day zero whatever you want to call it day zero or day one the triple a account is start with a zero balance so the main purpose of using this triple a account is to ensure that the earnings of the s corporation are not taxed twice remember when the S corporation generates revenues and incur expenses, then they will come up with the profit. So let's assume the profit is 60,000. Well, this profit, whether it's distributed or not, let's assume you're a 50% owner, as I just mentioned, that 30,000, if you're a 50% owner, you're responsible for paying taxes, whether you took the money or out, whether a distribution is made or not. So therefore, we need to keep track of how much profit you already paid taxes on so there's we keep we keep this in a triple a account so it's very unique to the s corporation so the following lead to an increase in triple a so the triple a will start at zero then when the company makes a profit it doesn't matter whether that profit is taxed or not triple a is increased then we have what's called separately stated items and gain and we don't include in that amount in that amount tax exempt interest just hold on that so let's assume we have 5,000 of those separately stated items and gains passed to the shareholder who's responsible for paying taxes for those. Then we have depletion and access of the basis and the property, if any, which is not, we're not going to assume there's any. You don't have to worry about this. Then we have certain things that could reduce the AAA account, such as the opposite. If we incur losses, so if the company rather than profit incur a loss, the shareholder will, will have to absorb some of that loss well if you absorb losses let's assume in a particular year you were allocated 10,000 of losses the losses just like the opposite of the ordinary income as far as the AAA account they reduce your AAA well separately stated losses and deduction just the opposite of separately stated income and gains let's assume there's 2,000 of those for any particular year and non-deductible expenses other than those related to tax exempt interest don't worry about this and we'll talk about that later and any distribution to the extent of AAA available so simply put we're going to take the 30,000 and net them out to find out our AAA account whatever that account is so think of it this way AAA account is similar to retained earnings similar in concept notice it increases by income revenues and gains it's reduced by losses and deductions now again we keep tax exempt interest whether it's income or deduction out of the picture you're going to see why in a moment now the triple a you need to know that it may reduce your corporate law um, sorry the triple a may, may be reduced below zero so it can be negative by corporate losses and deduction so what could bring this below zero well if you have corporate losses and deduction over the years it could bring it down below zero however if you make any distribution so this distribution here if you make distribution it cannot it cannot bring it below zero so so first you have to figure out if the losses and the distribution brought it to zero then any distribution any distribution cannot bring it below zero but losses and deduction simply put from the business itself from operating the business you could bring it down below zero so that's the triple a account the oaa account what's the oaa account well we saw you saw it on schedule m2 the other adjustment account is an account that's designed to keep track of items that affect the basis but not triple a remember what did we talk about triple a we kind of kept out i kept saying tax exempt interest income 
although it's income, it doesn't it doesn't increase your triple A. Tax exempt interest expense, it's a reduction, it doesn't affect your triple A. So what do we where do we have this tax exempt interest and where do we have that tax exempt expense? We keep 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 track of it separately because it affects your basis, but it doesn't affect your triple A account. Because remember, your tax exempt interest is not taxable, whether you are an S or a C. It's not taxable, so it doesn't need to be tracked in the AAA account, okay? But if you did receive tax-exempt interest, it's going to affect your basis. So to keep track of that, we keep track of it in the OAA account. So the following account will affect the, the OAA account. Tax-exempt interest income and its related expense. So tax-exempt interest income would increase your OAA, well, would also increase your basis. Related expenses, which is tax exempt interest expense interest expense that you incur to obtain that tax exempt interest income should reduce your basis but not your triple a again tax exempt life insurance proceeds they're not taxable and if you pay a premium to obtain that life insurance that's the deduction but it doesn't affect your triple a it affect your stock basis and also if you pay taxes on on accrued s corporation year that related to a c corporation so if you paid federal taxes for something that's related to a C corporation in the past, well, that's going to reduce your OAA because your ability to pay distribution is reduced. Now, just know that this is what the OAA is. Now, the important question is, how is the tax treatment of the distribution? How do we treat that distribution? Well, this is where it's going to come very important, our knowledge of what we just learned. The tax treatment all depends on the origin of that distribution. Where is the distribution coming from? Well, if it's coming from the AAA account, and the first thing we see, we looked is, do they have a AAA account? And remember, on Schedule M2, we have that AAA. The first thing is, it's AAA. Let me ask you this, is it taxable or not? Not taxable. So if it's coming from the AAA, it's not taxable. Why? Because the AAA keeps track of amount that you already accounted for and paid taxes on, although you did not get. So when they distribute the money, think of it this way. Let me give you another analogy. Let's assume you deposit it in the bank. I don't know, you, you have quite a bit of cash, a million dollars. Now the bank, uh, earned, uh, that for a year, you earn 10%. So you earned $100,000. Now this amount here, the bank would send you a statement at the end of the year that says you have to pay taxes on this amount. And let's assume 20% taxes for simplicity. 20% taxes, you paid $20,000 in taxes. That was year one. And you kept that money in the bank. In year three, you took this money out. Now you went to the bank and you withdrew your interest, 100000 Do you have to pay taxes on that? No, you already paid the taxes. And the AAA account is similar in concept. You already accounted for that revenue, for that gain, and you pay taxes on it. When you take it out, if the distribution is considered coming from the AAA, and that's why you have to keep track of your AAA, then it's not taxable. Then, if it's not coming from AAA, let's assume you were a C corporation in the past. We would look to see if you have any AEP. So the first thing, it's AAA, not taxable. If the distribution is coming from the AEP, accumulated earnings and profit, well, guess what? It's dividend. Why? Because it's supposed to be dividend when you had it as a C corporation. Then here it's dividend. So that's easy. Once you, it's coming out of EMP, it's dividend. Once you deplete your AEMP, well, we would look at your other adjustment account. Remember other adjustment account, you might it might be different than AAA because it has those tax exempt tax exempt interest and uh, life insurance proceeds well if you have anything here it will be considered from here and again this is not taxable because that amount that's here it's already not taxable right from the get-go then let's assume that's the case then you used your OAA then we would look at your basis we would say is the amount coming is it considered a share uh, coming out of your basis if it's coming out of your basis you should know that's not taxable because if it's coming out of your basis, it means that it's a return of capital. The corporation is giving you back what you invested. You have a basis. Once the bases are depleted, are down to zero, and they're still giving you money, then guess what? Whatever distribution and access to the basis is considered capital gain. Now they're giving you back money more than what you invested. It's like you invest in a company, $10,000, and they're giving you back fifteen. dollars Well, 10000 is your return of capital. The additional five is an access. 
Well, that's a capital gain. Okay. So in general, a corporation that never operated as a C will have no EMP. So if you if you are if you've been an S all all your life, there is no AEMP. And also, if you have no tax exempt interest or life insurance proceeds, this one don't exist. So simply put, it's going to be either non taxable because it's either triple A or shareholder basis, which is also non taxable. And if you go beyond your basis, it's capital gain. So it's very easy. So the distribution to shareholder that for from a corporation that never operated as, as a C corporation, well, distribution to the extent of the S corporation basis are return of capital. First of all, we said triple A, not taxable because it's already been taxed. Your basis, if it go down to your basis, not taxable because that's your basis. They're giving you back your money. And if they gave you money, way more than your basis above and beyond then it's then it's capital gain it's as simple as that let's take a look at a quick example to start to illustrate these concepts so Zena, a calendar s year corporation made a distribution of twenty thousand dollar in cash to its shareholder sam okay let's take a look prior to the distribution sam basis in the stock amounted to eleven thousand two hundred and the operation neither had an e emp nor triple a so they don't have a triple a to start with they don't have emp it was it was never a c corporation so there's no emp and they have no 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 triple a from the past basically brand new and just gave gave them twenty thousand what's the appropriate tax treatment well if they distributed twenty thousand dollar is it going to be taxable or not well we find out whether there is a basis and if there's no basis it's considered a capital gain given that the corporation has neither emp nor triple a the amount distributed is non-taxable to the extent of the shareholder basis and any distribution and access is considered a trap capital gain so let's assume the basis is eleven thousand sorry the, the distribution is 20 the basis is eleven thousand two hundred assuming the basis is eleven thousand three hundred so of the twenty thousand dollar we say the first eleven thousand eleven thousand two hundred return of capital or return of your basis and that's non-taxable and the remainder 8,800 is capital gain and you're subject to a capital gain tax, whatever your capital gain tax happened to be, zero, 15 or 20%. This is how it works. Now let's take a look at the rules of distribution when the S corporation operated as a C corporation before it became an S. It's a mouthful. So you were a S in the past, now you're a C, what happens? Once again, the rules are, I just went over the rules, let's go over them one more time. First, we assume the distribution is coming out of the triple A, assuming there are triple A. If that's the case, not taxable. But you have to understand, if you take the money out, now we're going to talk about the basis. So the triple A, now I'm going to be adding this concept here, not this concept, this important addition is, it reduces your shareholder basis. So as you take the distribution out, you would reduce your triple A, but also triple A withdrawal reduces your basis in the S corporation. Once your triple A are depleted and you're still taking money out, we want to see if you have any A, E, and P from prior life. Prior life mean when the corporation was a C. If that's the case, that amount is considered dividend income and based on your dividend income. However, this distribution, the amount that we say it's dividend from A, A, E, and P, don't affect your stock basis. Because this is coming from the C corporation. The only reason you're paying dividend income on it because the C was transferred into an S and now you are taking the money out. We're going to go back to your original formation and tax you based on that. So it doesn't affect your basis for the S corporation. So notice dividend income, yes. Affect your basis? No. Once we depleted the accumulated earnings and profit, we would look at the OAA. Again, we would look at the OAA, and OAA are not taxable. But the OAA reduce your basis. They would reduce your basis. Okay, because when you when you brought them in, they were money, actual money that you brought in. Now what's going to happen when you're taking them out, they're supposed to reduce your basis. Four, any distribution and access of, you know, we depleted the AAA, we depleted AEMP, we depleted OAA. Any basis that you have left, if you have left, distribution, as long as you have basis, it's return of, return of capital, which is not taxable. It's called, basically, they're giving you back your money. 
once they give you money in excess of triple a aemp oaa and an access of your basis well that's considered capital gain and the best way to illustrate this is to work an example so once the stock basis is reduced to zero any additional distribution is treated as gain from the sale or the exchange of the stock let's take a look at the summary first and this is a good summary if the distribution is considered coming from the triple a it's non-taxable but it does decrease your basis if the distribution is coming from the AE, AEMP, which is you were, you were a C corporation in the past, well, the amount is taxable as dividend income, but it doesn't impact your basis because the C corporation has nothing to do with your S basis today. If the distribution is coming from OAA, well, it's also non-taxable. Notice, it just the OAA is very similar, not very similar, it's the same treatment as AAA. If now the, the, the distribution is considered shareholder basis coming from your basis because those three don't exist, you, you have not, none of them, then the amount is non-taxable and it does decrease your basis. If they, keep, if they keep giving you money way above your basis, it means your basis is now zero, but they keep giving you distribution, then it's taxable as a capital gain and your basis are zero. You cannot bring your basis down below zero with those these distribution because here what we're assuming basis equal to zero and that's why it's an access of basis let's take a look at an example at the end of the current year chloe a shareholder of the smith inc and s corporation received a distribution of a parcel of land with a fair value of 72. the corporation had accumulated a e emp of 17,000. it means at at some point in the past this was a c corporation the triple a account is 20,000. in addition the closed stocks basis is 31. Determine the amount of the distribution that's taxable to Chloe. Now it's very important, let's, let's do this. I'm gonna keep track of the basis, keep track of the AAA account. The basis we're starting at 31,000 and the AAA is 20,000, AAA is 20,000. And what else do we have? AEP is 17, okay. Now we're gonna start. The distribution comes first out of the AAA account, okay? Well, how much do we have in the AAA? 20,000. Therefore, we have 72 in total, 72,000 minus 20,000. So that's gonna go against the AAA and it's gonna bring the AAA down to zero. The AAA, we're done with the AAA. Would that affect your basis? Of course, would that, of course it will. So reducing your AAA will affect your basis. Now your basis are 11,000. Now let me, take, let me use my calculator. We have 72,000 in distribution in total, and we used up 20,000. What's left is 72 minus 20. What's left is 52,000. Now, do we have AEP? Of course we do. We have 17,000 in AEP. So of this 52, 17,000, it's gonna go to AEP. This is basically the second level. It's gonna reduce your AEP by 17,000, bring AEP down to zero. Would that affect your basis? No. The second distribution don't affect your basis. You still have 11,000 of basis. And the distribution here is considered dividend, which is taxable, but doesn't affect your basis. The AEP is from a different life. Now, the remaining, which is 52 minus 17, equal to 35. Now, we still have 35,000. What do we do? Well, we still have basis of 11,000. So of the 35, 11,000, it's going to be considered return of basis, Re not return of basis, return of capital. So negative 11,000, your basis is now to zero, and this is not taxable. Notice your base, your AAA is down to zero, AEP down to zero, your base is down to zero, okay? What's left is what? 35 minus 11 is 24. This additional 24,000 is considered what? Is considered capital gain. So to summarize, out of the, out of the total amount, 41,000 is taxable to Chloe. Why? Well, you got 20,000 of, trip, I'm sorry, not 20,000. You have 17,000 from the AEP that's taxable and you have that excess, that excess that's left once the bases were depleted and that's 41,000. And that's the amount that's, that's taxable. Well, guess what? The, the remainder is non-taxable. The remainder is non-taxable. 
What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs, true, false, multiple choice questions that's going to help you understand this topic. This topic is extremely important. The AAA account, the AEMP, OAA, those are tested, heavily tested distribution from an S corporation to a shareholder. So get comfortable with them. How do you get comfortable with them? Look at additional resources. Farhat Lectures can help you. I'm always here to help you. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.